Welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up this week, I've got a Lesney Model 74 Refreshment Canteen. So this model was first introduced by Matchbox uh, as part of the 1 to, 5, uh, 1 to 75 series uh, back in 1959. Uh, this model came in four different colors, um, a white, a cream, a pink, or the most common, which is what I have here, a silver. The uh, the base colors on these kind of varied. I think Lesney used whatever colors they had. This particular one is uh, a lighter shade of blue. There were several different shades of blue, as well as a sea green, like seafoam green. Um, and as you can see, this model has certainly had some better days. Uh, most of the original decals are missing on it and uh, when I got this one you may remember this from uh, my preview video the uh, tow hook on it is busted um, you can see the inside here it's had some little critters living in there for a while looks like uh, some spider egg sacks and some dirt and other crusty stuff in it um, overall the the models not in terrible shape and I thought this was a great candidate for a restoration. So if we look at the top, there's our little spider buddy still up in there. You can see him kind of hanging out. Um, this one, uh, you know, has enough damage to it that I didn't feel bad about doing a restoration of it. Sometimes when I get these models, yeah, they might be older, they might not be in perfect shape, but you know, it's only original once, and so I really kind of have to be careful when I choose which models to do a restoration on, and this one certainly fits the bill. So after getting this cleaned up with a little soap and water, got most of the crusties out of it, I'm going to go ahead and stick it into my citrus strip uh, paint stripper and just kind of do a dunk on one side. I'm going to flip it over, that way we get everything coated. Um, and I'm going to let this sit. Uh, citrus strip works really well. It's non-toxic, no fumes, and I really like working with it. On our base, you can see when I got this all cleaned up and got all the dirt and crusties off of it, the base is really not in bad shape. Um, other than that, that broken tow hook and a few scratches, um, this is a, a really should be pretty minimal effort on this. Not sure exactly how I'm going to fix this tow hook yet. Um, the pieces on it are, are really pretty delicate and uh, trying to use a wire brush just to get some of the paint cleared off to, so that I can make sure I can get something to stick to it. Um, I, I know that there's no way there's any kind of replacement pieces made for this so this is definitely going to have to be something that I build or create and i um, got a couple ideas. Uh, I've seen some other restorers use uh, JB Weld to build up some of those things. There's the old uh, super glue and baking soda ticket. Uh, but for this, I, it's got to be functional. It's still got to fit a tow hook in it, and uh, it's got to be able to hook up and, and work. And I don't want to do something that's so delicate that it's you know really just meant for display or sitting on a shelf forever. I want it to be a, a functional repair to the tow hook. So. Uh, we're going to try out a couple things and see if they work. If they don't, we'll try something new. First step, of course, in uh, doing anything with this base is going to be to get the wheels and axles removed. Um, this axle here is actually really, really rusted. Uh, the, the wheels seem to be fairly seized up on it, and uh, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to be able to repair this axle or if I'm going to have to replace it. Um, you can see that the rust kind of um, expands the axle and so I'm very worried about these uh, plastic wheels. These models came with uh, three different wheel types. You had either a, a black plastic wheel, a gray plastic wheel, or a silver plastic wheel. And I have uh, all three of those variants in my collection already. Uh, this was a duplicate, these uh, gray plastic wheels, but anytime I get these axles that are really rusted and seized up, when that rust expands inside of the plastic wheel, a lot of times it cracks the wheel. And uh, I can already see kind of some hairline fractures on these, so I'm not sure that um, I can get these off 
in the original shape right there you can see the line I'm gonna do my best to try to save them uh, but I may be looking at doing a wheel replacement or wheel swap on this model just because of all of that rust on the axle So I was able with uh, some gentle persuasion to uh, pound out the axle from that first wheel. That let me get it off of the model. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to use a little 4 aught steel wool and remove as much of the rust off of the rest of the axle as I can before I try to remove this second wheel. The second wheel you can see is completely seized up on the axle due to all the rust. And so I'm hoping if I can get most of that axle cleaned and polished, um, that'll kind of clear the way, hopefully, for being able to easily remove this second wheel. With the wheels off, I can go back to my uh, emery boards and really hit at some of that harder rust uh, that was being covered up by the wheel. Um, I was able to carefully look at those wheels and one of them is cracked. Um, so I'm pretty sure we're, we're going to go ahead and uh, swap the wheels on this model. But I think that this axle, if I can uh, get it cleaned up, should be able to be reused. So. Uh, it's always nice to, to use as many of the original parts as I can, um, and I'll have to look in my stash of original wheels, as I don't want to put replacement wheels on this. I want it to be original. Um, so I'll have to look and see what I've got, and see if I've got either the, the black or the silver, um, as I've, I've got plenty of copies of this model in the uh, gray plastic wheels. So uh, maybe we'll try to mix this up and make it a variant I don't have. So our casting has had uh, 20, 30 minutes to soak in the paint stripper. Um, I always have different reactions uh, depending on the age of the models. Some of these older models, uh, the paint that they used on them was just really good stuff and I get very little to no reaction at all on it. I end up using uh, a lot of steel wool or mechanical means to try to get it off. This one I was hoping for a little better result because of so many of the nicks and scratches on it. Um, a lot of times when there's already some paint loss on the model, it allows that stripper to get in and affect it a little bit quicker. And uh, this one, I'm just not seeing very much of a reaction. So uh, it may take a little more cleanup, may take uh, a couple bouts in the stripper. Sometimes I gotta do it two or three times uh, to get it to really start to come loose. but. Uh, you know, I, I've used the aircraft stripper, I've used some of the more caustic strippers before, and uh, the biggest difference is just time and patience. Uh, the citrus strip works great, and not having all the, uh, the fumes and everything else, I'm willing to do two, three soaks, whatever it takes, and, and spend a little bit more time um, to get it to work, rather than having to deal with uh, some of the side effects of all the other strippers. So, I think I'm going to go over this with my uh, wire brush here just to kind of scratch up and uh, give the, the stripper a little bit of uh, grit to get into the, the paint and get down into that original casting material. I'm using a, a, a brass brush because it's soft bristles. It's, it's strong enough to go after the paint, but it's not going to scratch the casting underneath. To begin the repair on the base here, I used my wire brush and the Dremel and just got everything back down to a bare metal finish. Now I took a little piece of piano wire that I have from back in my model building days. Uh, you can get it at most hobby stores. Um, but I took a, a small piece of this wire and I bent it into kind of a U shape. 
that I'm going to try to use a little bit of epoxy to put on. Um, the epoxy that I'm using is a JB Weld, and it comes in a two-part mix. Uh, there's a, a white tube and a black tube, and you mix it together, and it sets off a, a chemical reaction between the, the two different compounds. And JB Weld is supposed to be as strong as steel when it's done. Um, I've used this product before, uh, never on something this small. Um, and it's, it can be difficult to get your mix right because there's a, an epoxy and then there's a hardener. And if you get too much hardener in it, you give up all your strength. And if you don't get enough hardener in it, your epoxy will never dry. Um, and so I'm going to smear a little bit onto the top piece of the casting. And then I'm going to take the little bent piece of piano wire and try, I'm trying to align it as close as I can to where the hole would have been originally. Um, I'm probably going to have to come back and drill this when I'm done. And really the purpose of the tiny little piano wire in there is just to give some rigidity and strength to the, the JB weld. Um, if I were to try to build this all out of JB Weld, the second I would try to drill it, the whole thing would probably just crack and break off. And so um, we're going to give this a shot. And uh, I, I am using a quick setting um, version of the JB Weld. It says it's supposed to cure in 5 to 10 minutes, but I found it, it may say it's cured, but you really need at least 24 hours to let it go off and get up to full hardness. And I don't want to drill this or make any um, any changes or, or do anything that might crack it or break it off until that epoxy is fully cured. So I think this is looking pretty good. Uh, so we're gonna set this aside and let the epoxy cure up. And then we'll come back and clean it up afterwards. So we've let this sit for 24 hours now, and uh, you can see the color change has kind of gone off. Um, in order to clean this up, I've got one of these pointed little grinding tips for my Dremel. And this is, this is really where I have the biggest chance of screwing something up. Um, this is not a, a drill bit. It's just, it's got a little bit of an adhesive or kind of a, a grinding surface on it and it comes down to a fine point. And so the first thing I'm gonna start with is the hole in the middle. And I wanna go real easy with this. You can kind of feel as you go in uh, what parts are soft and what parts give you a little more um, resistance. And so I wanna drill out where it's soft and I wanna make sure that I stop anytime I feel some of that resistance because the resistance is either the edge of the original casting, which I don't want to damage, or it's that little piece of piano wire that we put in there for some extra strength. So either way, I'm going to work through this real carefully, uh, and then we'll clean up the sides and the top and uh, just make it look a little more pretty. So with all of our sanding and shaping done, you can see we've got a pretty good result. We were able to bring back that full point and got the hole back in the original position that it was in. So this should quite easily hook up to any of the castings that had the little toe hooks on them. Um, I do want to make sure that that area underneath is nice and clear of any of that residual epoxy because I want the, the toe hooks to be able to fit nice and deep in there. And uh, I use that little emery board just to kind of clean that up. Anything that um, is left over, again, I can still use the little point. And what I'm finding here is that the hole that I have is, is not quite big enough uh, to accommodate one of those uh, toe hooks. And the test fit that I did off camera um, said that I, I needed a little bit more space in there. And so the only thing I'm going to do is just, and again, this is on real low speed. I'm going low and slow and just trying to work down some of the sides of that hole. Um, again, still want to try to keep it centered, but open that up so it's big enough to accept a tow hook. 
So as far as painting on this goes, uh, I don't really need to paint most of the casting. Um, most of what was here was in pretty good shape, but uh, I wanted to touch up those areas that we've sanded. I'm starting with a little gloss dark blue from Testers, and uh, I, I did notice that the, the blue color is not quite the correct color, and so I've got to put a little black in it just to darken it up before I add my white. And uh, this took quite a bit of mixing. Um, I didn't feel like shooting 20 minutes of video of me trying to dial in on this, uh, this color, but you can see we've got a really nice kind of gray baby blue hue that is as close to the original casting as I felt like I could get. Um, and so I've done a couple little test pieces, test patches on this to make sure that the color aligns and uh, this looks good to go. So I'm just gonna hit some of these areas where uh, we had some paint loss and then blend that back into the original casting. On something like this, I, I don't necessarily have to repaint the whole thing because the original casting is in bad shape, um, but I want to overpaint enough of it that the repair blends in with the rest. So that's what we're gonna try to do. So I've given the uh, casting a couple of days now to soak in my citrus strip and this paint appears to finally be starting to come loose a little bit. At least got a couple of flakes and some pieces that are coming off. I think for the most part the paint has uh, completely separated from the casting, um, but I am still probably going to have to use my brass bristle brush to uh, scrub off the rest of it, uh, as well as some of the oxide. Uh, due to all the, the chips and nicks and scratches in this, this base casting has a, a fair bit of oxidation to it. Um, and so I'm going to do the uh, brass brush to start, and then we'll go to some quad aught steel wool, and then eventually into a polishing wheel to see uh, how shiny we can get the original casting. So to paint the top casting, um, I'm going to try to go for a variant that I don't have, which is the, the creamy white on the canteen. Um, the cream that I have that's the, the off-white color from Testers is a little bit too dark, and so I know I'm going to have to lighten it up. Uh, and like most times when I'm mixing paint, I always want to start with the lighter color as my base and then slowly add just a couple of drops of the darker color to inch in on the, the correct shade that I'm going for. And so I'm gonna start out with the gloss white uh, for the base and then just add a couple drops of the off-white. And as always, try to use the, uh, the same product. I use the Testers uh, Thinner uh, Reducer to go with the same enamel paints that I paint with. And so add a couple drops of that just to thin it down so it'll go through my airbrush. And kind of a good litmus test for me when I'm mixing to know if I got enough thinner in there is can I use my frother mixer to mix it up? Um, if it's too thick, my little mixer is real sluggish. And if it spins freely, I know I got it thin enough. So i um, got my casting into my little surgical pliers here uh, to hold it. And I've opened the door. I'm, I'm not really sure how Lesney painted these originally, if the door was open or closed. But uh, I'm going to give it a shot with the door open and do my best to see how this comes out.
So after the inside piece dried, I started looking at all the details on that casting. And uh, I went back and I watched a video from uh, Fat Guy Productions that Paul had put together on one of these where he would customized the interior and painted out all the cabinets. And I thought, you know, that is really cool. And uh, it, it is kind of difficult to see inside of the casting. And so I thought, you know what, adding a little chrome on the, the water jug up on top, painting out the stainless steel on the cabinets might help make it a little more visible. Now, the wheels on the original model, as I mentioned, one of them had cracked when I was taking it off. Um, and so I'm going back to my little stash of original wheels here. And I've got a pair of silver plastic wheels uh, that are the same size, same diameter. Um, and I think for the, uh, the custom direction that this is kind of headed now, where we've got the painted out base, um, I'm okay with doing a wheel swap on this and putting the silver plastic wheels onto it. So we've got our castings all painted up. Um, and here you can see the, uh, the base on this. Um, the more I looked at it and I just saw all those little details in the base, I knew that I just didn't want to leave it stock and original. There's so many little cool casting details on there. And so I used my uh, Molotow chrome pen on the water cooler and uh, the, the back and sides and all that are still original, but uh, I wanted to highlight some of those details and I think it looks better. On the overcasting, um, I went ahead and painted this two, three coats in the off-white. And you can see with the door open, there's a few spots that it seemed to like kind of get missed. Um, the kind of overhang here on the back, I've got a little section where the paint just kind of bubbled on it. And then down along the base here, um, I don't know if I got my paint too thin, but you can see it got really thick and it's really uneven and bubbled all the way around. And it's so thick on there that it hasn't really cured. It hasn't really set up. And I'm not real pleased with it. Um, and, you know, I could have probably faked it for the purposes of the video and got something out, but I just didn't want to do that. I think you guys expect a higher standard out of me and out of the restoration. So I'm going to see if I can sand this down and touch it up. Um, but, you know, it looks like it's just kind of smearing that and so I think probably the best course of action is just going to be to strip this and start over with it. Yeah, I know in the YouTube universe the, the power of movie making and digital media uh, we can be really selective in what we show and I've always tried to make this more of a, a DIY kind of angle when I've shot these videos and so I think an important part of that is showing not only my successes, but also my failures, the times I screw up. You know, I think a lot of these videos really nicely produced. You get them out there and you see a quick before and then the after in, you know, a 15 minute uh, video clip. And I know this video is going to run a little bit longer because I'm showing a little more of the detail. I don't do that on every video, but I have got comments from, from viewers that you all appreciate seeing kind of every step of the process and I felt like I just wouldn't be genuine in this going through this whole thing if I didn't show some of my mistakes and screw-ups on this and trying to get them fixed so this was another uh, just about an hour soak in the citrus strip the the newer paints seem to react a, a lot better than some of the older enamels that Lesney used but we're going to strip this casting back down and give it another shot Little did I know what I was getting into with this. Four times I have repainted this overall casting. And uh, going through that, it, I just came up with an idea to do something a little bit different. So if you remember the old lunch wagons and the old canteens, um, a lot of times they were done in stainless steel and just done to a mirrored polish. And after stripping and sanding and stripping and wire brushing and stripping again, this casting started to take on a, a pretty shiny appearance. 
And so I decided, you know what, what the heck, I'm just going to go ahead and polish out to a mirror that center section of the original casting. And then I'll do the white, but I'm only going to do the white on the roof and the lower section. I did order in some uh, replacement decals for this. I got these from uh, modelsupplies.com, um, and that's the MK Model Supplies that you've probably seen in some of my uh, mail call videos. I know I've talked about them before. Really, really happy with the water transfers that I've gotten from them. Um, I did order uh, a whole bunch of new water slides from Black Square because they were very highly recommended on a couple of the collector groups. And uh, so far, it's been a month, and I am still waiting for the decals. And I've emailed them. They said, yep, we've had lots of problems with shipping to the U.S. It can take up to four weeks. And so I'm still waiting on my decals from Black Square, which is actually holding up a lot of the other models that uh, I've got waiting for you guys. Um, but I, I, want, I had these on hand, and that's part of the reason I wanted to move forward with... Uh, this restoration first. So I'm going to trim these back. Uh, this model, you know, the areas where these decals go, it, it's pretty tight. And so I kind of feel like I don't need a whole lot of material around them to get in the way of placement. So I'm going to trim these up just as tight as I can. And then we'll go ahead and get them soaking and get them on the casting. So with the top two decals done, now I can turn my attention to the, the larger decal that's on the front. And uh, this is really a behemoth. Um, it's, it's a big decal, it's a big piece, and it all comes in one strip. So we're going to do our best to try to get it on. I've trimmed the, the top really, really close to the edge of the decal, and that's so that I can line that top edge up with the counter that's on the casting. And these, one of the things I like about the MK uh, water slides is it, it doesn't take very long for them to come loose. They're, they're really pretty quick. Um, they seem to be a, a little bit thicker, uh, much harder to tear. And so I'm not scared. If I need to use my fingers on it, I can. So I'm going to line these up on the paper first. And that's now you can see why I trimmed the top of that paper off. The sides uh, are giving me a little bit of a fit here because you kind of have to get it lined up on the front first and then almost roll it around the sides of the casting. And this one is actually working very, very well. You can see the, the tolerances on these are, are so tight um, because you've got the, the words right at the bottom. And a lot of the original castings, when you find these, those tiny little leather letters on sandwiches and pies are usually worn off on the bottom because they're so close to the edge and they would have been ground against the, the dirt and the floor and whatever else a child was playing on. And so this was really uh, kind of delicate to get it on, but I was able to hit it in one shot and really didn't have a lot of problems. And I think when you get good quality uh, water slides and you get good decals to start with, 
it sure makes putting them on so much easier. So big shout out to MK. Thanks for uh, quality water slides and good products and fast shipping. Uh, anytime I've ordered from these guys, even in the U.S., I usually get it straight from the Netherlands. Um, and with international shipping, everything, I get it in, you know, five to seven days. So uh, very happy with them. Can't recommend their stuff enough. Uh, if you're doing any restorations, check out MK Models. With both casting pieces finally done, we've got a replacement silver plastic wheels. I used uh, Marty's method to mushroom the head of the axles out on there on my drill press. Um, really pretty excited with how this little piece is starting to turn out. Uh, the Moto Chrome really sets off those little details on the, uh, the back there of the, the counter. Um, hit the clock and the cash register as well. I did have to make a, a slight adjustment to my repair on the tow hook, and that's because when I did my test fit to put these all back together, it was uh, conflicting with uh, the top part of the casting. Uh, wasn't letting me close it up tight, so got my little mini files in there and had to file down just a section. Um, did take the paint off, but it's going to be inside the casting when it's all assembled, so I wasn't going to see it and didn't want to risk messing something up, so I'm just going to live with it. Now, to put this piece back together, it's got the tab and slot at the rear, and then the top used one of these uh, methods that Lesney used on a lot of their early castings, and that was this kind of um, squared post with two little tabs that would bend over. Now, when this was taken apart, those little tabs were kind of bent back, and uh, there's not really a good way to mushroom them back out without risking damaging the casting or the painting. And so in order to put this back together and assemble it, I'm just going to use a little super glue. So here we have our Moco Lesney Matchbox number 74A Mobile Refreshments Canteen. So this started out as a restoration and kind of transitioned into a resto mod. And sometimes, you know, I, I like the freedom and the creativity to do something a little bit different with these castings. And this surely is different, but uh, I've always kind of self-imposed a rule. And that is that if I'm going to do something custom, I still want it to be something that maybe Lesney would have done originally. And I think this is certainly in the spirit of that. Um, it's definitely going to be a standout piece in my collection. Um, as I mentioned, I've got all of the different variations in the silver. I'm still on the hunt for an original uh, cream or white. And I've never seen, even in photographs, the pink. Uh, so if anyone has ever seen a pink canteen, please send me a link or post it down in the comments um, because I, I'd love to see what one looks like. And maybe, who knows, I'll do a, a future restoration on one of these and we'll try to make the pink variation. Um, but this one really turned out just incredible, a, a lot better than I thought. And um, I, I'm really glad that I didn't give up on the painting. If it takes me four times to get it right, I'm going to do it four times. And this is the, the perfect end result. So uh, thanks so much for joining me this week. As always, if you enjoyed the video, give us a like down below. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments. I do read all my comments. Uh, you want to keep up with everything we're doing on the channel, click that subscribe button. And uh, as always, join us next week for another vintage diecast restoration.